So we're talking about cosmic mm -hmm. mysteries here. And another big cosmic mystery, we might as well put on the table, is is there life elsewhere on another planet? Uh, Will we ever know this? Uh, I mean, what's what's your best guess? I'd, I'd sort of be interested in sort of taking a little poll here. Yes. Yeah, we will know. <laughs> we yeah. will find it, or we will know. Um, what what is the distinction between finding <laughs> it and knowing? <laughs> Yeah, um, so, you know, this was once a, a question that was sort of a, um, you know, just amusing of people. Is there life on other worlds? Are there other worlds out there? But we're really in a period now where um, just over the past several years, we've come to know that there are billions of planets in our galaxy alone. Um, and that a lot of those must be small. Um, that's what our, our data tells us, is that a lot of them are small in the sense of being something the size of Earth or Venus or Mars. Um, and those are the kinds of places that we think we might be able to find life in the universe. Um, now, all of the sort of newest of the telescope projects that are coming online are all geared not only at finding more of those planets, but in looking for um, something that we call biosignatures, signs of life, uh, usually in terms of um, looking at the chemical balance, the makeup of the atmospheres of these planets, that might tell us that life is influencing the composition of that atmosphere in the same way that you know, here on Earth we have um, ourselves, we breathe in oxygen and out carbon dioxide and plants do the reverse. Cows walk around farting methane out into the atmosphere. So we have a, an atmosphere that betrays the presence of life. Um, so uh, the question um, that I think is a, a little more unknown, um, because we know in, in principle anyway how to discover life, and so really it's just a question of where to look. But the other question that we have is, is complex life, life that is um, perhaps not just um, small microbial organisms, but life that does things like you know, have panels and build skyscrapers and uh, contemplate its place in the universe and ask these kinds of questions. That's more difficult to know. Um, how, how, how would we know? Exactly how, how, well. would, yeah, how, how would we ever detect that other than you know, they come and visit us? Really have. <laughs> <laughs> can, can, I, can I first say, so, so Lucianne has articulated the party line, and I strongly disagree with it. I, when I was a student, that was the, the point of view I, I put. I think the big unknown is going from non-life to life. We have absolutely no idea how that happened. We don't know how to estimate the odds. You can't estimate the odds of an unknown process. It could be it's one in a trillion trillion uh, to one against per planet, uh, in which case we're the only one in the universe. We have no idea what that number is. Uh, now, we can hope that... Uh, it's you know one in ten or something, but seeing as we don't know what the process was, it's very easy to imagine uh, a sequence of events, which each of which individually is pretty rare, and there's a thousand of them needed, and collectively they're so rare that this isn't going to happen more than once in the universe. When I was a student, that was the point of view. Francis Crick said, life seems almost a miracle, so many of the conditions for it to get going. And uh, Jacques Monod said that... Uh, Somewhat sexlessly, man at last knows that he is alone in the immensity of the universe out of which you emerge by chance. So the point of view then was chemical accident so bizarre, such a freak, that it will have happened only once. Then the pendulum swung, and now it's fashionable to suppose that the universe is teeming with life, but the science hasn't changed. We're just as ignorant now about going from non-life to life as, as we were. Now you may, uh, That's very uh, true, yeah. very true. Right. Right, so there's only one place that where we can be certain we will find life beyond Earth, and that is Mars, and we know that because he's got there from here, not in our spacecraft, but just by impact ejector. So Mars will have been seeded with Earth life, and Earth will have been seeded with Mars life throughout its history. So that's one place where we can be absolutely certain we will discover uh, eventually that uh, there is or was life on Mars. That's not the interesting thing. We want to know, can life happen twice? So, so I'm going to I want to take a quick it? little poll here so I've been among among the three of you. So your best I mean obviously this is pure speculation here. Your best guess is there life elsewhere, and if so, is there intelligent life? I'm just sort of interested mm. in getting each of your takes on that. Um, Lucien, let me start yeah, with if I if I can briefly respond um, sure. and answer your question. Mm -hmm. So that is absolutely true, um, and this is oh, a let me <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I, I, but it is true though. Um, and this is a question, um, you know, what are the chances that there is life everywhere and, uh, that I get asked a lot? And, and particularly, um, you know, there's a little bit of like a nudge, nudge, wink, wink, like there's got to be life everywhere, right? Because there's all those planets. 
And it is absolutely true and an excellent point that we don't know. You can't do statistics with one example. Um, and that's why astrobiology exists. Um, so you know, it is true that we have a lot of places that we can look. And it, I think that if life is out there, that we will find it. Um, and that was the thrust of my answer. Uh, is my, what is my guess, again? Um, if guessing was good enough for me, I wouldn't be a scientist. <laughs> but you have hunches. Um, I mean, every scientist has hunches. I, I would say that I am, uh, I would like to answer the question um, that I am spending a lot of time on it. If there's <laughs> nothing out there, I'm going to be sad. Um, <laughs> But you know, I also would fold into that um, that finding um, my past life or even extant microbial life on other planets within our solar system, which I do think we also have a great chance of doing. Um, that I think is is just as interesting to me as finding it in in some ways even perhaps more interesting than finding it um, around other stars. Um, although it's a it's a close tie, so I would like to is what I would say. Okay. Ard, your what, what's your hunch? So I don't have a very well-defined hunch yet. I think on the origin of life, so it's true that we have no idea how the origin of life happened, but we do, the only one thing we do know is that it happened quite quickly on Earth, not long after the late heavy bombardment it happened. So that's just that it may be relatively easy to start, although as far as we know, it only started once. Uh, there are all kinds of interesting things, like the genetic code is highly optimized, which suggests there were some kind of things happening before, though, some kind of pre-Darwinian life. So there's all kinds of interesting hints going on. On the other hand, we also know that life is very fragile. It needs an awful lot of things to be right at the same time. So my kind of hunch, which is probably not worth taking a big punt on, is that there's, I'd be surprised if there wasn't some kind of very simple proto-microbial life somewhere else. I'd be surprised if there was complex life, just because I would expect to have seen some signature of it in some way or the other. <laughs> but. The, I think getting... this rapid appearance is another fallacy, as Brandon Carter pointed out many years ago. Um, because if life hadn't got started very quickly, we wouldn't be here discussing it before the habitability window of the Earth closed. Okay. So life, if you're going to have a planet with intelligent beings who discuss such things, it had better get going quickly. quickly. And you can put the numbers in, assuming that every step of the way is very, very rare. And the numbers are very consistent with what we know about the, the habitability window of the Earth. So rapid appearance of life is consistent with it being widespread. It's also consistent with it being very rare. It doesn't actually help us very much. I, I think we should look right here on planet Earth for another form of life. Uh, it's often called the shadow biosphere. Because if life does pop up readily in Earth-like conditions, this is the most Earth-like planet we know. And what, what, what are you saying? What, what, what does that mean, sort of a shadow version? Well, it life? means that all life on Earth is not the same life. So all life on Earth so far studied is the same life, but how do we know we've studied it all? Most life on Earth is microbial, and you can't tell by looking at those little critters what makes them tick. You've got to delve into their biochemical innards. And uh, mostly, I mean 99.9% .9 of microbes have not been <coughs> characterized, let alone cultured, or sequence. We don't know what they are. Wait, so, so are, are, I'm trying to figure out, are, are you suggesting there might be different origins of life yes, right yes, here I mean, on Earth? Yes, many, many, but you only need one other, uh, separate origin of life, and they could be descendants of the, that, if you like, second genesis event still intermingled with the life, life we know and love I, today. I think, I think Paul's argument is basically saying if it's easy for life to, to start, then on Earth like planets, and it should have started many times, and you might see remnants of that, which I think is an, that's a, might go that, look that's a, that's I mean, a very good think, argument. I mean, you, it's, but, you should look for it. You use uh, molecular uh, <laughs> my, my, <laughs> microbiologists <laughs> are looking for life all over the place. Well, Why don't I, they grew, just <laughs> I grew up in New York, and I hear it's in the subways, so. <laughs> <laughs> So just to sort of round out this uh, discussion, so Paul, your hunch, uh, will we? Well, I, I've explained I'm, I, I will not answer that question because we don't know the process. OK. So I can't, I mean, I, I, can, answer, I can make something up, but, but there's no informed guess. Uh, but what I do feel is that the next step, going from some sort of microbial life to intelligent life, well, we don't know how to work that out either. Uh, but at least we know the process that made it happen. It's called Darwin and evolution. So we understand that mechanism. One day we might actually be able to do the calculation and figure out how many 
billion years does it take? Uh, we can't do that at the moment, but we know what the mechanism is. We're going from non-life to life. We don't know what that mechanism is. So that's why I think the aerobiles are all in that, that step. Mm -hmm.